What's up, folks? Coming at you with a video with a not very nuanced subject matter. I'm not going to be arrogant and suggest that 99% of you won't have a clue what I'm on about because, well, that's not me. In fact, I'm going to say that 99% of you actually will have a clue and in most cases, more of a clue than me. If you're interested in a yellow sweater-wearing man trying to shift the burden of proof of the existence of a god, then this is the video for you. Hello, I'm the Skeptic, the British floating circle that watches people make extraordinary claims. And then I explain why I don't accept what they're saying. What happens when someone tries to use word salad to shift the burden of proof? I'll tell you. Nothing. Because trying to twist how to explain the existence of the undemonstrated actually doesn't do the job you think it does. And extremely handsome Paul here thinks he has a way of not having to explain the existence of a god and change the burden of proof onto the (laughs) non-believer. Silly Billy. But before we discover where the burden lays, if this isn't your first sceptic video, hit the like, the subscribe and the bell and maybe we can shift the algorithm to work for us all a bit better. And a super thanks to those that hit super thanks in some recent videos. Karen Tuplin, Elizabeth, Phoebe Flanders... Kevin, Mabity Babity, and Dudist Priest, Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe bestows leaves upon you all. More hen. Well, let's shift into first and find out who needs to prove what, shall we? What's up, everybody? Coming at you today with a video on a very nuanced subject matter. I'm guessing 99% of you won't even have any idea kind of what I'm talking about, but... Great way to alienate most of your audience in 15 seconds, mate. Make them think they're dumb. Great going. If you are the type of person that's interested in discourse and conversations around spirituality, God, that kind of thing, then this this subject matter could be for you. It's been something that's been on my mind lately, and uh, I just wanted to share my thoughts. Maybe some of you... Um, may be interested in what I'm about to say. Oh, I'm interested. I'm interested in how another theist can f*** up definitions and proof burdens. Because why stray from the norm, huh? You know, before in the past, I was a little bit confused because I would watch a lot of content between atheists and theists. If you don't know what those words are... Then I'm going to condescendingly explain to you, since you're probably not a person that knows how to turn on a computer and use the internet. A atheist? Well, what do you think that word means? Does he think his 689 subscribers are shouting at the screen right now, or that his audience is four years old and he's the theistic Dora the Explorer? Traditionally, atheists means somebody who doesn't believe in God. They say God does not exist. Where does it say that? It says, does not believe, not believes does not. I find it hard to believe that someone would read some words and make up a whole new meaning to it. Oh, no, hang on. No, I don't. Though there are some who say that gods don't exist, but that's more likely a minority. And you did say traditionally. An atheist believes in God or says that God or gods exist. And next week we'll learn to count to 15. Exciting times. Now the word atheist, the definition of that has changed. And that's that's one of the main things I want to cover today. I really don't think it has, bud, but sure, let's see. Now what I see get brought up a lot in these discussions is this burden of proof. So I was like kind of like, why do they keep talking about the burden of proof and just kind of shifting it back and forth? make that same assumption that you do, then you shift the burden of proof to turn my lack of belief into a positive belief by accusing me of physicalism. And it's it's more clear to me now. So Is it though? Since you don't really understand what an atheist is. Essentially, whoever makes a claim bears the burden of proof. What does burden of proof mean? It means that you're obligated to give evidence on your claim. So, for example, if I say, hey, it's raining outside, let's just say for some reason we can't confirm and look outside and and know for sure if it's raining. But let's say I make a claim, it's raining outside. The burden of proof is on me, so I have to provide evidence on why I think it's raining outside. Well, that's all well and good, but who cares if it's raining or not? I'm sure most people have seen and experienced rain, so it's not surprising for it to be raining. Plus, not believing it's raining doesn't get you sent to a fiery torture pit. If you're going to give examples, at least make them analogous. Fairies, leprechauns, Bigfoot, that kind of thing. If somebody else says, 
it is not raining outside, they made the claim the burden of proof is now on them. Or, because there's nothing that amazing about rain, you can just look out of your window or door and go, huh, oh yeah, it's not the same as undemonstrated sky people. Are you following me? I know, like I say, it's pretty nuanced. But what I see over and over in these discussions lately between atheists and theists is the atheist will say, I'm not making a claim. I'm not saying that God doesn't exist. Just as it says here. I'm simply saying that I lack a belief in God. Atheism is simply saying God is not guilty of existing. It's not the same thing as saying God does not exist. And that's the new definition now of atheists is a lack of a belief in God. I'm not misreading this, am I? They say the same thing. Now, why is this important? It's important because it's much easier to shoot down a claim than it is to make claims for yourself. Or maybe I should say provide evidence for claims. So you're trying to change the wording so your claim can't get shot down. Huh. Now to go to the example that I gave, it's raining outside. Let's say I say it's raining outside, so now the, bur the burden of proof is on me, so I have to provide some kind of evidence. Or, you know, no one cares because it's not extraordinary for it to be raining. The only extraordinary thing about rain is the potential that it's a sign from the one true cosmic deity, Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe, leaf be upon her. Of course a giant rainbow giraffe uses rain to communicate with the now-evolved creature she pooped into existence millions of years ago. So let's just say I say, well, you know what, when I see people walk in the door, I see that their shoulders are wet, their top of their head is wet, I can infer that it's probably raining. Wet shoulders doesn't necessarily mean rain. Just like, look at the trees doesn't necessarily mean a god. I hear what seems like rain on the roof. That, that leads me to believe that it's raining. Some people hear knocking or steps in old buildings, but that doesn't mean there's a ghost walking through a room. It could be wood warping during temperature change. Reaching conclusions the way you do is on you. From time to time, I hear thunder. Where there's thunder, there's clouds. Where there's clouds, there's probably rain. Where there's clouds, there's probably rain. Ah, uh, somebody skipped class. And honestly... This was one of my favourite crossovers in science and geography. There are ten basic types of cloud, with nine of them having different heights in the sky and one that is an absolute beast. Out of these ten basic types, cirrocumulus, cirrus, altocumulus, altostratus, stratocumulus, stratus, cumulus and cumulonimbus, only two p*** down on you. That's a one in five chance of the types of cloud giving rain. That's not probably rain... That's probably not rain. Those three things leads me to the conclusion that it's raining. You know, you could just go outside and see if it's raining. Look at the rain. Bring other people to look at the rain. Take videos of the rain and demonstrate the rain. How comes no one's ever done that with a god? Okay. Now, the thing is, giving evidence for your position is a little bit more tricky. Now, if you have the position of just hearing somebody's evidence... You could always just come up with alternate explanations to disregard what they say. Which only needs to happen when the claim is extraordinary. Otherwise, you just go, well, that mundane thing you're claiming doesn't affect me, so who cares? So somebody could say, well, the, the water on the shoulder and on the head is probably there's sprinklers outside. There could be. And what you think you hear is rain, it's probably just birds walking around on the roof. It could be. And that sound that you think is thunder... Uh, that's just electrical transformers just blowing up from time to time around your house. They could be. So, of course, I don't think it's good to do that. I don't think that that's good practice if we're really trying to get to truth. But it's easy just to throw out alternate explanations, like I said, of what's possible. Like, is it raining? Let's go and look outside and see for ourselves. Which is very different to a sky fairy being claimed. That's where there's an issue. It's all, I feel it in my heart, or I had an experience that I can't explain. That's not proof. But it's not about what's possible. It's about what's more plausible. It's about what's more reasonable. Now, again, to go back to discourse, athe atheists will say right out the gate, I'm not making a claim. I just lack a belief in God. So the burden of proof is on you. Which is correct. So quit whinging about it 
and demonstrate the God. So they shove all the, the burden of proof onto the theist, right? So then the theist goes over all of their evidence, evidence after evidence after evidence, and then they say, no, 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 and they just come up with alternate explanations, like I said, over here, which is very easy to do. Anybody can do that. It's not alternate explanations. It's why those arguments aren't convincing. There's a big difference. And of course the burden of proof is on theists. They're the ones saying that the God exists. So if you are an atheist, right, and you truly just don't know, right, you just, you're not sure, you lack a belief in God. If that's your position, just consider saying that you're agnostic or just say you don't know. Nobody knows. Everyone is agnostic. But knowledge is not the same as belief. Do you believe there's a God? Yes or no? Saying I don't know to do you believe in a God means you don't know if you believe or not. Not I don't know if there's a God. But don't come in with this stance that God doesn't exist and then use words to kind of shift around so that way you can just throw the burden of proof onto somebody else. How about saying that because no gods have ever met the burden of proof of their existence, I find it easy to say I don't believe a god could exist until it's demonstrated otherwise and then drop something that resembles a mic and walk out. And if you're a theist and you like having these conversations or you found yourself in a conversation with somebody and they do something like that, uh, something that you can do that I feel like kind of shed some light on the situation, is you can just kind of flip the script. Or what we call attempting to shift the burden of proof unsuccessfully. You can say, I'm a theist. And they'll say, oh, so you believe in God. What evidence do you have? And you say, no, 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 no. It's not that I believe in God. That's not usually how my conversations go. Mine are, and this has actually happened, someone says, I'm a theist, but I think we can still be friends. And I say... Okay, cool. What did you do at the weekend? I just lack a belief that there is no God. And why do you lack a belief that there is no God? Does that then mean you have a belief that there is a God? And then you're back where you started. So if you lack belief that there is no God, what leads you to believe that there is one? You see? And of course, this is just all... This is just trying to shed some light on some things. I'm not saying to really use that because I don't think it's good just to keep shifting the burden of proof. Especially when it doesn't actually do anything other than confirm you still have the burden of proof. But like I say, this is real nuanced conversation. Uh, if you are kind of into that thing like I am, just be aware of it. Whether you're an atheist or whether you're a theist. And I think that by being aware of that, we can have better discourse and get farther in our conversations at arriving at truth. Arriving at truth, huh? By shifting proof burdens? Yeah, no, that's not how you get there. Ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth after all. That's it for the video, guys. God bless you all. Peace. And that's it for the video, guys. Leaf be upon you all beast. I guess trying to be fancy with your words doesn't always go the way you want it to. If you claim that something exists, then you just need to prove it. That's it. Very easy. Saying you lack belief something doesn't exist doesn't change anything, but nice try. But maybe you disagree. Maybe you think that not saying you don't believe in something not not existing does it for you. And with all those negatives, I'm not entirely sure what I just said. But just let me know in the section below. I'm going to skeptic this as an unsuccessful burden of proof shift. A big thank you to this month's top level ticks on Patreon. George, Godless Granny, Addy Rockart, The Enixes, Jakari, Elizabeth, Whiskey Tech Fred, Rick and Travis, as well as all the $3 base ticks. You can become a supporter on Patreon too at patreon.com slash the skeptic the link is in the description along with links to all my other socials don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already from me the skeptic stay safe keep thinking logically and ask questions skepticism is the first step towards truth see you next saturday